All right, so you guessed it, I'm back with another SDI video. This one's just gonna be uh, about tolerances and stuff when, uh, you know, as far as manufacturing firearms goes, particularly the AR platform. This goes along with the AR-10 class that I'm taking. If you just watched my other video that I just uploaded today, you'll see that uh, I don't have a strip lower yet, so I've been using my other AR for that. But yeah, so we're just gonna talk about some like machining tolerances and like quality assurance that goes into, you know, the manufacturing of parts for ARs, because I, I feel like the AR-15 is a little more, has has more tighter tolerances than some others. My end goal is to uh, to start like a manu like firearm manufacturing company. I'm gonna be touching on uh, Blackout Defense a little bit today because they're like my, my favorite company right now. They're like my biggest inspiration. But yeah, I'll put a link to their website in the description below so you can check them out. Uh, I guess we'll just jump into it. All right, so uh, tolerance. Now, when we talk about tolerances, we're talking about like, the very, very precise measurements of uh, the parts, you know, and components and whatnot. Most of my experience with tight tolerances has been with reloading because I reload ammunition a lot. Um, so it's mostly just dealing with headspace and projectile diameters and how they react with bores and stuff. But for this assignment, we're going to talk about a few parts, three to be, three in particular. This one's a little outside of the gun kind of subject, but um. I wanna talk about the magazine, right? So there's a reason why people prefer like these these polymer P-mags and stuff over the uh, the steel the steel magazines is because, I mean, the, the metal ones will warp over time and then magazines are a really good example of a very loose tolerance. It's gotta lock into the receiver properly for the for the rounds to be fed correctly. A good example is shooting shooting a 300 blackout AR-15 using 5.56 magazines. Actually, I'll, I'll pull them out for an example. So I feel like this is um, this is something that I feel like people don't really think about. Now, 5.56 and, 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 and 300 blackout are, are, as far as like the casings go, they're pretty close together. You would think that you could use both magazines for each, but these magazines, this one's a 300 blackout, this one's a 5.56, and they look almost identical. But if you look closer, you, you have these lips here that guide the actual projectile itself in the magazine. On the 5.56 one, you see how small those are. And then you look in the 300 blackout one and they're almost non-existent. Now, you would think that wouldn't really be an issue, but when I built my 300 blackout, that was my first AR build about three years ago. I, all I had was 5.56 mags. Constantly had, um, it, it would jam up a lot. What was happening was I had this big projectile in a 5.56 magazine but these little lips would misguide the projectile essentially. And the projectile is really what kind of guides the bullet into the chamber of the barrel extension to catch those feed ramps. And it couldn't engage those feed ramps properly. And that's just one of the small things that goes into manufacturing. And this isn't even part of the gun really. So that's, a, that's one example of like a bare bones explanation of what we're gonna be talking about. Now moving on to the, the, the firearm side of things is the barrel. So the barrel also consists of the barrel extension and you're gonna have your chamber, you're gonna have your throat, you're gonna have the locking lugs and everything. Now that's where that's where things get, start to get a little tedious because when you go through the locking step of the cycle of operations, these are the lugs that are gonna lock into those lugs on the barrel extension. Now I don't know the exact numerical specification for these lugs in relation to the chamber or the, the locking lugs on the bolt side or the barrel side, I know it's pretty close. I feel like an issue that you could see with uh, over like heavily used bolts or just poorly made bolts is, um, is you know, if it's like a poor shot pinion job and it's not, you know, Carpenter 158 steel or MPI, magnetic particle inspected and whatnot, you'll see a lot of bolt failures and it'll typically be on one of the lugs. I also read on, uh, I can't remember what it was. Let me find out. The Everyday Marksman website has an article talking about specifications and uh, the extractors are, are as, as per mil spec, which is what you'd want to do at, le at the very least is uh, uh, tool steel. I think Carpenter 158 is tool steel or S7 tool steel has, uh, is what the extractor has to be made out of. But the, bar the barrel and bolt kind of go hand in hand as far as uh, locking and chambering goes. That also kind of brings me to headspace. Anytime you install, uh, this goes for like bolt action platforms even, you have go and no-go gauges. Um, obviously the no-go gauge is gonna be an incorrect headspace and it's not gonna, it's not gonna sit freely in there. And when you put a, a go gauge on the bolt and you drop it into the, the chamber of the barrel, the bolt will spin free. Incorrect headspace will be usually be a result of a, a bad chambering job. But then moving on to the bolt carrier group itself. Now this this is kind of like the heart of the gun. A lot of stuff goes on here. A lot of steps of the cycle of oper operations can actually go bad, uh, can, can malfunction if 
if there's something wrong with the bolt carrier group as a whole. One of the big things when designing a, a, a repeating or a semi-automatic uh, firearm is somehow incorporating a delay to where the, the firearm can fire properly without prematurely extracting or breaking open the breech um, from the chamber. So on the AR platforms, AR-10s and AR-15s, and I believe the uh, AR-9 platform as well, there are mechanisms designed and put in place in, in the bolt carrier group that will prevent a round from being fired before the chamber, before the gun is locked with, uh, with the round in the chamber. So if you look at this bolt here, the way it's sitting when it's forward like that, this is the configuration the bolt carrier will bolt carrier group will be in when it's traveling inside the firearm and if you look and I press on this firing pin it's not going to protrude out of there and if I push it back a little bit more it's still not protruding out of there still not but if it's fully locked the only time it'll be this far back is when it's fully locked in the most forward position and the round is chambered and it's locked in place and the lugs are behind the, the lugs are engaged with the barrel extension firing pin can go through now those are small, small, small tolerances that, that go into the machining of the bolt carrier group where the firing pin retaining pin is and the cam pin and the bolt and everything that allows that to happen. And that's really, uh, it's, it's kind of like timing in a nutshell. I'm sure there's a lot more that can be touched on. I kind of did this assignment in a rush, but um, yeah, hopefully you guys, hopefully um, y'all got something out of that, so. Lastly, I just want to talk about, um, you know, where, where to get your training for that kind of stuff. Now, this is a video assignment, and it's supposed to be for, you know, my instructor only, but it, I put my stuff on YouTube for everybody to see. First things first is look at SDI, because I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, you know, just getting all the training you can where where the opportunity is presented. So there's three big places that you can get proper training and how to how to be a good gunsmith and and learn how to not make those mistakes or learn, you know, there's a lot of mistakes that can be made that people just don't know. So the first one is obviously the internet. That's what everybody uses, the internet. It's 2024. But um, not everything you read on the internet is true, but it can also be really useful. Forums are very useful, but you should be very mindful about you know who's saying what on those but i uh i personally like networking and books published books are my go-to this class isn't like a reloading class but um reloading has been my thing for for years I'll, I'll choose a book like this over anything i see on the internet any day and then uh just talk to people you know like get the the more opinions that you hear the, the 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 more you'll learn you know uh in our lecture this week they said there's there's a there's multiple ways to do the same thing most of the time there's no one right way there's just the best way that works for you and lastly just don't take on tasks that you're not ready to take on so pretty soon i'm going to start getting into uh cnc machining you know learning the ropes with that kind of stuff doing the basic stuff first so uh, stay tuned to my channel. I'll probably be putting that stuff up probably within the next few months. With that being said, just uh, stay strapped and stay safe in and out of your workspace later.